It's your girl, Jazz, Min, Nicole, and welcome to Wait With Jazz, a safe space for the obese, the overweight, those who just want to lose weight, and myself to share our weight journeys, and a little bit of my life too. I used to be 284 pounds. 12 years ago, I lost 115 pounds naturally through intermittent fasting and running as my choice of cardio. I've managed to get down to 175 from the 284. But although we do know that's still in the bracket of obesity, so I wanted to get down to a more appropriate BMI for me. Plus I just, you know, I've never been 130 in my life. And I'm like, look, I'm ready to be what's according to my height and let's see what that life type talking about. So I chose to uh, embrace this final 40 pounds or so with GLP-1 medication, Zetbound brand, and now currently terzepatide compound. So I'm on a 7.5 terzepatide compound as a split dose. So I'm on 3.7 milligrams of the terzepatide compound. Been on that for some weeks. So that's, that's where I'm at now. Y'all, I really think this medication is adjusted to me now. At, even at the split dose, I think the split dose is adjusting comfortably with my body. Uh, I'm just really amazed that the side effects have pretty much disappeared. But I still gain a little anxiety because, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I might mess up thinking I'm eating with allowance and then something creep up on me later on at night or something, you know, wake me up in the middle of the night and I'm in discom gastric discomfort and all that. Those are my fears, but I kind of think I've outlived them at this point, okay? <laughs> I don't think they're there anymore. Case in point, last night, okay, had me a good old meal, had nice organic cheese pizza, with my, you know, I, I dress it up. I threw, the, I threw the garlic powder, onion powder, crushed red pepper flakes, and some type of herbal green seasoning on top because I like herbs on my stuff. So I'm ready. And this is, uh, I think it's artisan dough. It was like artisan bread. So I got it from my local organic uh, store around the corner. They're like a Trader Joe's. I'm just so, I'm so happy that, that a, a similar version of Trader Joe's is literally around the corner from me, walking distance. It's, that's just a beautiful, anyway. Sorry, that's one of the perks of my move, y'all. This environment that I put myself in and the surroundings of uh, store accessibility, quality store accessibility. It's just amazing. Like, I'm just so, like, grateful and happy that, like, I'm finally in a different genre that I needed to be in for my own comfort and my own elevation. You feel me? But anyway, back to these non-existent side effects. They are really non-existent. I remember back in the beginning of the GOP-1 journey, I was experiencing, and this was on Zetbound, I was experiencing serious diarrhea, gastric noise, grumbling, all in my stomach after injection. Probably like three, three tours to the bathroom. I'm talking about release, all right? That was on a brand. I think that's common with the brand, and that's one of the side effects I'm glad I no longer deal with once transitioned over to a compound. Because when I transitioned to the compound, I initially transitioned to the compound at a five milligram dose. So it was higher than a 2.5 that I was initially on with Zetbound brand. I was getting those serious gastric effects with 2.5 Zetbound brand. But when I went to five milligram terzepatide compound, I didn't have the diarrhea side effects. I didn't have the gurglization in my stomach. I'm talking about when I was on Zetbound brand, it was like 
a monster in my stomach. I was like, hold on. Like it was really talking to me and then invaded my other area. I said, oh, I'm telling you, I understand when people say they nearly own themselves. And I mean, when you first get, especially on the introductory dose of the brand, that is, I think, I think most people experience the diarrhea. I definitely did. The compound, I have not experienced diarrhea. Have I experienced constipation? I would say marginally, marginal uh, constipation. That's if I just didn't get enough fluids or enough of my probiotic in me, enough vegetables in me. If you consume roughage, just vegetables in general, that kind of alleviates the constipation, okay? Without you having to take outside fiber. You can take the fiber that's already naturally in the greens. I am a vegetable eater, so I really don't have much of the constipation situation. However, every now and then, I would discover that uh, it's a little, it's a little rough exiting. You feel me? Like it's a little, it's a little rough exiting. I need a little smoother transition. And usually, and I, when I experience that, it's, it's something that I did not do, which I should have done. I should, I should have consumed enough fluids that, I, that actually helps the flow of your, your juices, your, your fluids and other fluids pass through the body. Water is an essential in everything with this body, y'all. Um, and then just taking in my regular amounts of fiber through eating. So... And if supplementation is necessary, fiber supplements. But other than that, I did not have any is real issues with constipation, thankfully. Um, but now it's feeling like I'm not even on the meds. And it's not a bad thing, because I like that feeling. I'm feeling like I'm not on this medication, but I feel like I'm on the medication, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm not on this medication because I don't have them serious side effects that I used to have. I don't have that real stuffed full feeling without even eating anything. You know, I was, I, I was walking around here just feeling full. Just like I ate and I didn't even eat, just full. Didn't really want water, you know? But now it's like, I'm regular. I can eat, but if I go beyond I overeat, then I start to experience gastric interference, GLP-1 interference. Like if I choose to go overboard, excuse me, but I believe my allowance has expounded now that I'm on the 3.75 milligram split dose of the 7.5 terzepatite compound. That split dose and over time has, uh, I, really adjusted to my body and I would say comfortably because I'm comfortable I'm not I'm not pressed and stressed about eating however or overeating rather however I am still concerned about the thirst because I I don't know if y'all have this weakness, but I continue to have this weakness of forgetting that I need to continue to flow fluids down my throat, okay? And when I do drink, especially if I'm in my working environment, I might drink a bottle of water or something like that, or something else, tea that's still water in it. Um, but then I may forget it later, you know? Forget further drinking water or whatever fluid I may have at hand. And then time flies because I'm busy doing my work, coordinating, doing whatever else. And then I'm realizing, Jazz, when you dehydrated, your lips are kind of dry. Mm, your throat dry, girl. Okay, like, <laughs> you need to get something to drink. So that is one of my weaknesses that I continue to carry. Lacking of fluid consumption, being thirsty, AF, just flowing fluids in. I mean, but the good thing about constantly pouring fluids into your body is that your body is retaining and releasing those fluids and what's coming out with those fluids are fat.
you know, visceral fat hopefully is coming out with them fluids. You know, because our, you know, our fat leaves our body through urine. So, I mean, that's the, that's the, the upside of consuming a lot of liquid. You know for sure that you are going to be effectively losing weight as long as you're sticking to your calorie deficit. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much my take on this because I'm just feeling brand new and regular. I don't know, I'm feeling like am I, I'm still a part of the community. Everybody else still feeling the, the waves and the groves of the side effects. My side effects is pretty much gone and I'm enjoying food. I'm enjoying food with moderation on this split dose. This is my dose. This is it. This is my dose. 3.75 milligram is my permanent dose for maintenance. This is it. And it takes you playing with doses to find your sweet spot. This is my sweet spot. Splitting that 7.5. I'm already approaching the maintenance. No, I don't have a weight update for you guys yet. Anticipation, anticipation. Y'all gonna get another update within this weekend. All right, hope you stay tuned. Hope you cut your notifications on for your girl when I do post a video. I'm hoping that this this weight update uh, be that final maintenance weight update, you know, of me reaching the goal of 130 pounds. We'll see. Now, of course, my journey is not over. Me providing content relative to weight management weight loss glp1 use is not over because i'm in maintenance and then this is weight with jazz so this is all things weight related with jazz <laughs> and that goes on through the course of my life so i will continue to provide content updates on my um my physical fitness efforts um because i'm 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 going into what is this on my pants hate that I'm going into body recompositioning so you know there are going to be videos about that GOP1 and glute gains I'm heavy in it and I want to share this information with you guys for those who are dealing with the after effects of extreme weight loss if you were over 100 pounds or 60 plus pounds and you're losing it you're losing it at a, a pretty speedy rate. Regardless, you're gonna have, you know, some looseness. You're gonna have some sagginess. I'm not wishing it on you, but it will happen. It may happen, I'm sorry. It may happen and for some it will happen. And for me, it did happen, okay? It happened when I lost 150 pounds at the beginning without this GLP-1 medication. And it happened losing this 40 pounds with the GLP-1 medication. So, you know, it's inevitable, but you definitely can build your body back up. It's a, based on your diligence. You know, you may be annoyed that, okay, I was already on this GOP-1. I went through these systems and steps to get this weight off. And now I got to build my body back up because my, body, my weight then dropped in other areas in which you have no control over because you cannot spot lose. You cannot spot lose, but in certain instances, you can spot gain. And that's kind of considered re body recompositioning. You're losing weight, and you don't have control of where it loses. Where it, where it loses. So whatever the effects are left, you, now you have to regain some weight and work with weight training specifically to kind of get the the marginal weight gain that's gonna be muscle, pretty much, purport, it'll proportion itself in a, I think, in my opinion, it will proportion itself in the right areas as you're going through the weight training and you're slightly influxing your, your calorie count and you're consuming the protein and you're doing the right exercises. When you're doing, when we're talking about glute gains, you have to do glute exercises and glute exercises in intensity and repetition, y'all. We're not talking about just staying somewhere and do 50 squats. That's not gonna cut it. 
unless you doing it every day. We're talking about if you really trying to build your bum, you need to do, you need to tr- at least five days a week, every morning. No one's saying that you're going to be sweating like a dog, running a mile or nothing. You're specifically glute training. So this is my mindset. I'm weight training with my arms and I'm glute training. I'm doing deadlifts, sumo squats, back to side leg lifts, 100 on each leg so I can feel glute activation. I need to feel my glutes burn because when you're feeling it burn, that means muscle is tearing and reforming. So this is the phase I'm in now and this is the phase I'm gonna be in for about three to six months. Because you, I'm not going to see ma- you're not going to see major glute results unless you stay focused on your glute routine, the consumption of your calories and protein. Then you will see the effects. But you have to primarily it's work that body. Even if you're not taking in all that protein, you want to see whatever sagging lift. You have to work it. You got to work it. And I'm conditioned in working it, and I am so obsessed with the idea that I am going to to the best of my ability be a lean a leaner version of me I want to see how lean and cut I can get this is for me and I'm not pushing anything on anyone else and this channel is for me to document my journey for me and maybe for those who are interested or not But I know for real, for me, I want to see what I can do real time. This has been a wonderful journey and it's not over because I want to really hit body recompositioning. At 130 pounds, once I get there, I want to I want to tighten up and I've been doing it. Like I said, my arms, y'all saw them in a previous video. I got a whole bunch of stuff brewing in as far as more content I'm delivering, guys. Exercise related, weight training related, etc. cetera. Um, but you know, just give me some time. It takes time for creation, okay? You know, this is an art type of thing and I just don't wanna do things sloppily. You know, I want my stuff to be on point so then I can get the right responses from the algorithm. Okay, all this is, a, this is, all this is a science with YouTube, okay? Anyway, what's going on with y'all update? Let me know. Y'all already know every time I hop on here, I want to know what's going on with you. What's going on with you and GLP-1? What's going on with you with Zepbound? What's going on with you with Manjaro? Come on, what's going on with you with Ozempic? If you want it. If you on Sex Sender. If you on Trulicity. <clears throat> if you on Victoza, what's going on? If you on semaglutide compound, if you on terzepatide compound, how's it going with you? How's your A1Cs if that's an issue for you, if, if it's diabetes re- uh, related? How are the weight stalls going? Are they better? Because I know you guys are experiencing some stalls. Let your girl know what's going on. I also want to really kind of touch bases on fasting, guys. I know fasting is a bad rap from some, but a glorified rap from many. Um, I am your, I I can never hide the benefits of intermittent fasting. Eating one meal a day, that's essentially a part of intermittent fasting. Because when you eat one meal a day, you're eating one meal a day, and you are fasting the rest of the day. You eat in one setting, and then you fast the rest of the day. You also have, you know, other forms of fasting. I don't know if you've heard of rolling fasting. These are a little bit more aggressive forms of fasting for a kickstart to weight loss if you are really excessively obese, or even just a kickstart to a body cleansing and a spiritual body cleansing. Um, rolling fast are pretty much consecutive fasts and if I would and if I would theorize it I pretty much am a rolling faster because I fast every day so to me if you're fasting every day you on a rolling fast but to some a rolling fast is like 65 to 90 hours of fasting then they eat and then they go right back into the 60 plus or whatever amount of fasting they're doing 
And this is advantageous, you guys. It is. Don't think it's so extreme, but sometimes different people's uh, different weight situations calls for extreme measures. Fasting is it can be extreme, but it's so beneficial. It's so cleansing and it's so cell uh, restorating. It restores your cells. It, if you do it long enough, it, it gets rid of the bad cells in your body, AKA disease cells, AKA dead skin cells, which are loose skin. And this is something called autophagy. When you reach a certain level of autophagy fasting, your body will eat the dead stale cells, the dead protein. But you know our body is composed of protein. Skin is protein. So the loose skin that we do have, unfortunately, there is hope for it to snap back into elasticity over time if you practice a fasting regimen, typically 17 hours or over. You can do 30, 40 hours, whatever, but if you at least do 17 hours or over on a consistent weekly basis, you are in autophagy. Now, autophagy is not something that's overnight. You need to do it for a period of time if you want to see the benefits of it contracting your loose skin. You will start seeing your loose skin tightening up. Look this stuff up, you guys, autophagy. I'm not giving you information that I do not know that I have not looked up myself. Because I know I have loose skin in certain areas. I'm like, okay, with, within this fasting, how can I correct this without surgical procedures? Correct it enough, even if it's not perfect. How can I get the skin to tighten up in my arms, in my thighs? And intermittent fasting, not only for weight loss, but intermittent fasting for helping you tighten up your loose skin. Autophagy which is, I believe it's Greek, for eat thyself. So your body eats its protein, its dead protein. So I believe you're really supposed, when you really wanna hit the highest levels of autophagy, I think your protein level should be very, very low. And I know that's an against the GLP-1 guidelines, keep your protein high, but if you, you guys, I'm, I'm thinking outside of the GLP-1, okay? There are other me mechanics, <clears throat> excuse me, that can be incorporated in your weight loss journey and your weight management journey and your body recompositioning journey. Like this is a tool I'm using in my body recompositioning, fasting. Not fasting for weight loss, but fasting so that my body can slowly eat its dead skin so I can minimize my loose skin. And this could take up to a year. It just depends on you and your patience and how you can stick to fasting. And for me, I find fasting so easy and minimalistic because I incorporate fasting when I'm sleeping. I don't exclude that time. So I'm sleep for eight hours. I have fast for eight hours. When you wake up in the morning, breakfast, hence the word breakfast means breaking your fast because you have fasted for eight hours or so while you were asleep. So instead, I'm going to continue the fast for another eight hours. Nine for the most time for me because I, I typically hit 17, but you can play around, you can do 16, but I want to hit the autophagy number. So the autophagy number is at least 17 hours. So I'm fasting nine hours additional to the eight hours I was sleep. That's 17 hours right there. And then I eat one meal in that window. And I've been doing that since, since GLP-1. And I was doing it when I lost 115 pounds too. I just got off board because I got confused about the calorie deficits with the one meal a day maintaining the deficit and not thinking just because you're eating one meal a day you're supposed to overeat your deficit if you're trying to lose weight you know what i'm saying if you're not maintaining so i was trying to lose weight but i'm overeating the calorie amount in that one meal a day so i had to get that under control it's under control now um but you know just it was a learning experience 
all this is trial and error, trying different systems, different weight management, weight loss systems to try to get you in the best health you can, physically, inside and out. I don't want you guys to just exclude everything because of what you hear naysayers speak against certain things that really can benefit you, such as fasting. Fasting is beneficial. You don't have to do extreme. You don't have to do autophagy fasting. You could just do low-key fasting. You can add four hours on to your rest. So you wake up in the morning, fast for four hours. You add that on to your eight hours. So now you know you fasted for 12 hours for the day. You know, your body went 12 hours without eating food. That makes a difference. And like I said, these are tools I will always practice. But you guys, especially with the loose skin, and I'm going to keep you updated because I am maintain, going to maintain, try to maintain autophagy fasting. Um, because I have loose skin I want to tighten up. I have some loose skin I want to tighten up in my thighs and uh, my lower glutes in addition to my glute exercising. So this is not over. And I'm wondering, you guys, where, where is it going to be over for you? Everybody has different journeys different outlooks so is it just you lose or what's your goal drop down tell me what your vision is are you on this GOP one medication just to lose a certain amount of weight you're not really caring about like further body enhancing building or you know just want to drop pounds or you want to drop pounds but you want to possibly go into the next phase of transformation you are you trying to take this from fat to fit which one are y'all? It doesn't matter which one you are, though. You're, you know, you're in a healthy space either way. It's wonderful that you're doing this for your better health inside and out. But because people have different visions for what their weight goals are and their body goals are, I'm interested to know what, what's your vision on here. My vision is to turn from fat to fit. Some people vision they turn from fat to just thick. You know what I'm saying? Whatever's comfortable for them makes them feel better in their skin, but still healthy enough internally and externally. So you guys, I just wanted to give that a little bit. I know I touched around here and there, but it was needed. The the 3.57 um, the 3.75 milligram is wonderful. And I'm staying on it until otherwise. And of course, you guys are going to know if I need to titrate up at a point or go down even lower. There's no need to titrate up, though, because I'm approaching maintenance. There's just really no need. I'm cool where I'm at. And I just love the fact that I can eat food. I'm going a, I'm to a include my meal I had yesterday. Okay. And that was my one meal a day. My one meal a day, y'all. And it was absolutely delicious. I really enjoyed it. And I didn't enjoy it like with slight discomfort, like it was in the beginning of my journey. Like I was just scared to eat. I was eating, but I was eating very slow and marginally. I felt like I couldn't even get excited and chew my food at a, high, at a faster rate because something may not digest right or I mess around and be too full, too fast. And I didn't even get enough of this food in my body. This was in the beginning phases of the GLP-1 medication, especially on the therapeutic dose. This dose, 7.5, <coughs> excuse me, it did me in. It did. That 7.5, that probably was the furthest I can go. Um, I don't think I need a 12.5, I'm sorry, a 10 or 12.5. Because this was it. Well, it could have possibly worked if I remained on the five milligram. It's not a guarantee. Um, I, I mean, the medication would have worked and hence the medication works, but it would have worked possibly at a slower rate. I know I was, you know, trying to get the weight off at a certain rate. So, 
I titrated up to 7.5 because you reach the maximum weight results when you are in the therapeutic dose, 7.5 and up. So that's why I did. I don't regret it. It's all about the life experience, but I now I know what medication, what dose medication works for me and what doesn't and how I can maintain a sweet spot. And honey, I am in my sweet spot right now, okay? And this is where she gonna stay. But I'm gonna get at you guys at the next video. Be real.